Dunkin' Donuts when I was working there, and I'm like, <laughs> and they're like, I'm spitting in your coffee. Yeah, they're like, oh my god, I re- Jacqueline, it's been so long, and I'm like, oh my god, not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and now I'm like, I don't even hear from these bitches at all. Thank the heavens. Literally spit in their coffee. Are we good? Yeah, we're okay. I got everything <laughs> up. I've I've been prepared, so I started streaming. I like how we went from like politics to. <laughs> what we were like in middle school. It's just what happens when you've been friends for too long. <laughs> okay, last episode. You made it into Castle Raven Love and learned some about Aslan. Woo! You met Strahd too. Woo! <laughs> Me, I'm like. Archeon and Sarah and Ari and Cerberus. Boo! Oh no. Jesse's got an Aslan her. is making a deal with Josie for their lives. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> Josie's like, eh, fuck. Bora, you see Strahd sitting before you on top of his sarcophagus as he re-enters the room. Your party follows you in as you notice Josie's decapitated head disintegrating <gasps> in his hands, her body going with it, as all that is left amongst the ashes is an object the size of two hands. It has three glass orbs that make a triangle shape, one larger than the rest. The larger orb looks like it contains a galaxy, while the two smaller that are connected to it are black and white, respectively. Strahd looks at it with a sigh and frowns. Leon's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Josie met with me earlier and said that the apparatus may have been used on her. She was correct. That was not the true Josie. The true Josie is being obscured from me. I believe she is with Aslan. <laughs> we will not kill her, though. Not yet. He glances to the object to the floor and says, Zebora, that is the apparatus. Please grab it, but not with your hands. Use gloves. Oh, shit. Um, um, let's take the gloves. <laughs> well, Leo has the gloves of swimming and climbing. Uh, we'll just, I guess we'll just pretend that she has leather gloves right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, or just put them on right now, like, yeah, whatever. He gestures to it, and he says, this is the apparatus. When the apparatus comes into contact with a being physically, it absorbs half of its soul thus separating it into two different beings. Once the, half, the ap- with, once the half of the apparatus is destroyed, the original half of the person's soul that was stripped from it is then returned, unless the apparatus itself is destroyed. Therefore, this makes a being significantly weaker. So the real Josie should be back to her full strength once more. Anyway, this brings me to my concept for saving Saturn and Archeon, and also getting everyone out of Raven Law. Use the apparatus on Aslan. Once used, he will separate into the lich and human, as before, thus significantly weakening him. This will stop him from being able to control Cerberus due to the lack of power, which will cause Cerberus to be idle while the souls within that still exist free for all over who gets control. This way, I'm not confined to holding on and fighting Cerberus and Aslan like I have been, and can physically help. Okay. Um, you see him take a deep breath, and he's clearly exhausted, and he says, From there, we will split into two groups, Team Aslan and Team Cerberus. Team Cerberus goes into Cerberus and retrieves Staron and Archeon, and since Aslan won't be able to control it, the other beings whose souls haven't perished yet will be distracted. It should be easy to get in and out, especially with Rosello, who can sense and track souls. So nothing should stop you from entering and exiting, exiting Cerberus as long as Aslan doesn't regain control. This leads me to Team Aslan. This team has to destroy whichever Aslan has the apparatus completely first, destroying the apparatus with it. Then follow up by killing the other Aslan permanently. Questions? Okay, so <laughs> Leon's like, okay, so... Right, so if you're saying that if Aslan loses control of Cerberus, then Archeon and Saren's souls will stop being, I guess, nothing will try to eat their soul as much, or they're still... No, this will enable us to get in and save them, because Cerberus as a being, an entity that can move, will be idle. Okay, so they're still getting eaten up in there. Yeah, probably, I don't know. I've not been in Cerberus from what I have uh, perceived from it, though, is that... There are a bunch of souls in Cerberus that are fighting for control, and when more souls enter, the stronger souls eat the smaller ones. Oh, so okay. there's probably souls trying to prey on them. Okay. That is essentially what is happening. But that does not stop when Aslan loses control. But what does happen is Cerberus stops moving. 
Because okay. other stronger souls tried to take over the place in which Aslan had. Okay. <laughs> How do we know who has, which Aslan has the apparatus? That is the question. Oh. <laughs> we have to kind of, I guess, he thinks for a moment. He says, the last time the one who was, the, had the apparatus was the human. Uh, because he was originally lich form. But that might be a little different now because... Technically, he is home, but I suppose the apparatus sticks with, with, with whichever one is not his true form. Whichever one is the opposite. Kind of like with Josie, how Josie was split into necrotic and uh, holy, right? She is radiant, so therefore the true Josie was obviously radiant, whereas the opposite of her, the other half, was necrotic. Because that was not truly her. Okay, so we just kind of. So have... whoever Aslan is at his court, I suppose. So do you think he's human at his court or lich? At this point, I would say lich, but mm -hmm. I suppose that entirely depends on your opinions when you meet him again. <laughs> we all just get a fucking pole. <laughs> we will be meeting him again quite soon. That is where we are on the way. But I cannot actually help you until you touch him with the apparatus, because I would still be fighting him. So once he is touched with the apparatus, perhaps I can actually intervene. But speaking of, um, maybe you should not have the apparatus. Yeah, you think so? So, um, how do you he has it? mentioned Julia to you, yes? If Julia comes and intervenes, perhaps you should not have the apparatus. Yeah, it's not like that kind of thing's fucked us over before. <laughs> so who should be able to use it then? You. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> you are the one that I believe he will underestimate. That is the assumption that I am making. Probably. Everyone does. else, he probably has a plan for, but for you... I don't think he, he would did have bury one. me in the ground and just summon my mother to try to take me away. Sounds dramatic. It's all right. It's not that bad. Glad. <laughs> what is? What did he say? I'm glad. Um, I don't know. We're trusting you. Okay. So, <laughs> don't be a fuck up or a failure. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Perfect. And Sabora, don't. Touch it. Get taken by the... I'll Whatever try the my best. I, Whatever I, the fuck she is. I really wish I had that meme. There's like some meme where some guy's just saying there and he's like, I hope this hasn't happened. He just snatched He's like, ah! <laughs> Any like, other questions you have for Strong? Okay, so I asked about the apparatus. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of just like, we have to figure it out. That's fair. But that's a good hint. Like, what's his, uh, what's his, what's his original? We know that the souls inside Cerberus do not stop, but Cerberus itself will stop. So, yes. How so, are we supposed to come in contact with Aslan with the thing? We have to touch him with it, but like, how should we go about doing that? That is a portion of the issue. I do not know. And that entirely depends on you all, how you want to go about touching him with it. But I think that when you all approach him, which that's where you are going to go next, you are going to go approach him wherever he is, with Josie, doing whatever he's doing with Josie, which I'm sure is not going to be good, regardless. <laughs> he is going to be there in his physical form. So you should be able to use the apparatus on him. He will have a plan for each of you. Right. This plan, I assume, will have him distracted on those of you who he thinks are worthy. The one who I believe he is going to think is not is Leah. Yeah, it's like, that's the good That's probably the best yes. assumption. Which is why I say you having the apparatus is probably the best idea. But... Can, we, can we throw it? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> if you... Yes! You don't get another chance. <laughs> he, gets, he gets like... Leah gets like a oh, cannon gun. He's like, hold still. <laughs> Alright, hold, 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 hold still! Hold still. <laughs> So if the apparatus breaks upon hitting him, then we're screwed either way. So basically touching him with it's the best. So it's like just... glass. Yes, it is. Okay. I um, and it's also it. worth noting that 
when you kill the one that has the apparatus, you have to destroy the apparatus within. So like disintegrate it, like completely destroy, like blow up, destroy. That is the only way. Um, the other hard part is that you have both as and it's fighting your boat. But you know, like, hey. So, let me, okay, let me, let me ask. So, if, if the apparatus is inside them, is it, do we have to attack them physically with, or with magic? Just normally. Just normally. Yes, but when you do kill them, like, the final blow has to destroy the apparatus. And magic's the best way for that? More than likely, okay. unless you have a bomb on you. <laughs> Leo's like <laughs> If you have a bomb that would work. I have a few grenades. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but sure. So where's like Mint little bomb. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And he like pulls it out. That looks intimidating. Pull the oh, pen and work. after a few seconds. Wow, I'm sure you will not understand what that is just as I have not, so that would work. Aslan's like what am I holding? <laughs> and then he just put it in his this little goofy thing. It has like a little smiley face on it, and he's like, Any other questions? Um, do you have any Halix? I'm, I might think of like one more that I have, but I don't know like what it is yet. So, so we touch Aslan with the thing. He splits into two, Lich and Human. We have to figure out which one has the, uh,. Apparatus. 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 Figure out which one has the apparatus and destroy that one. And then kill the actual thing. Is there a, like... Destroy part? the apparatus with it and then kill No, you will have to be split into teams, because while he is split apart, that is when the people will have to enter Cerberus. And it's Saren and uh, Archeon. You understand? Yeah. So Because he won't be in control, and therefore they have a strict time range where they have to get out of Cerberus at the same time. So, we have to destroy the apparatus at the same time as the other being, so that it can, once it's destroyed, it cannot rejoin Aslan. Hmm? In the same way that you destroyed Josie's other half that had the thing and it dropped and it went back to her. Hmm? Okay. So if you destroy the apparatus, it won't go back to him. Okay. But because yeah. that soul is a part of the apparatus. Whereas, the way I killed this one, obviously I did not destroy the apparatus, and so the portion went back to Josie. Right. Okay. We had to destroy it at the same time that they die. Yes. Okay. I can understand. Yes, you have to destroy the apparatus simultaneously as you kill the being that has the apparatus <coughs> within it. So therefore, probably the final blow should be an explosion, or a disintegrate, or Something big. Something boom. A bluey. Yes. Oh, is this right? Something along those lines. This is right. I tell you, this check is coming to play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Who wants to go in Cerberus? There's four... I think there's only four of us currently. Rizello, so. um has to go in Cerberus. So, Rizello, so who should go in there? So you have the option of Lucian, Ruzello, and Leon, and Sephora. Leon's got a... Well, if Leon touches him with the thing, then he can just go fucking free. So... Hmm. Tough decisions. Tough. Because Josie will be there. And Josie probably won't be going into Cerberus. I'm just going to put that out there. Josie's not going into Cerberus. Because she's a healer. She After you touch uh, the apparatus... Against as another, how about you go with Team Cerberus, Leon? Okay. <laughs> um, and that way you can get Archeon to make sure that he gets out as well as Saren. I assume that's what you want to do. I do. <laughs> okay. But I also don't know what the fucking risks there are everywhere. Uh, you know, we can change who's in what teams uh, after we handle the, the apparatus thing because I am also going to join the battle when we get to you actually touching him. Now you have to touch him with the apparatus. I don't care if every single person there dies. You have to touch him <laughs> with the apparatus. You cannot not touch him with the apparatus, okay? I don't care if it's your dying breath. You have to touch him with the apparatus, Leon. Do you understand? I... The face of the universe depends on you doing this. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Yes. Is there... Can we do something sneaky? <laughs> so, when we don't we'll show up there without the you other... You sense your presence. Okay, if he... So that means having an illusion of another Josie, because it wouldn't really work with him. I was going to say, because I said he says it. He is heavily magical. And not having been separated yet, he is basically a god. Will he be able to sense the apparatus at all, then? That's that's what I'm worried about. He probably will be able to, but that is why I gave the apparatus to you. So act dumb. (laughs) Act like yourself. Act like you don't know what it is. You know what it does. You know, all I know is to touch him with it. Oh, look at this pretty thing. (laughs) Oh, wait, go check this out! (laughs) Leon, no, this is what I imagine. Like, if it just goes funny, Leon just slams the orb into his fucking face, like, really hard. Any further questions? Hmm. Um. Because this will be your last time to ask. Touch a thing, I choose human. Fragile, kill, Simon. You can tell I really planned this out. Yeah. It's, you're trying not to make us go like off the path so hard. So I have so many options. We haven't even got to Josie yet. Oh, when we, God. When we get, when or whoever gets into Cerberus and gets Archeon and Saren out... Cerberus is ideally not going to be a threat because Aslan won't be able to control them because the other half of him is gone. Alright. So all the... And then after that, after Aslan's defeated, we run out of here. Even if you cannot defeat Aslan per se, and you can't defeat the two of him, right? All you have to do is have touched Aslan with the apparatus and you will be able to get in and out of Cerberus. And at that point, we're just stalling until they get out, and then we're gone. Okay. Now, the the goal is to kill Aslan. If we can't do that, we're getting our team and getting the fuck out. <laughs> okay. He's like, <laughs> because we all know that uh, Kira is destroying Ravenloft. We need to hush hush about that. <laughs> okay, so he does know that. Straw does. You guys told him because he told you he couldn't hear. Okay. Okay, good. Aslan cannot hear right now. I just hate it when we mention it because I'm like, Aslan's here! (laughs) Well, if you don't mention it, then he wouldn't have made this plan. And you wouldn't have told him. And y'all would have been fucked. Um, Because he wouldn't have made this plan for you guys. Because this is Strahd's this is Strahd's villain. Mm -hmm. And Strahd needs to make the plan to destroy the villain. And he's mm-hmm. basically set you up with helping you. Mm-hmm. Haven't done this for a campaign where you have somebody who gives you a plan. Okay, this is new. It's a tough guys. one. And Mary's like, take the plan. Listen it to it very well. <laughs> Listen to no failure. Listen to the plan. There's multiple plans here. I but bet. Strahd, um... It's, well, it's kind of the same plan, but there's different ways of going about yes. it. Mm-hmm. But Strahd says... If after we get Saren and Archeon out, per se, we start dying or losing the battle or whatever, we will um, get the fuck out. What do you think Aslan is trying to talk to Josie about? <laughs> See, that's a problem. I don't know. Um, that, that is a bit of a problem. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's very bad. <laughs> yeah, no, we as players like, know. <laughs> Not a good thing, but I suppose we'll see. As should have offered for Josie to sacrifice herself for those two. Oh, that's the bro, problem. And you know she would do it too. She she would. But you know what? This is more fucked up. It because is because Josie up. would do that, but this isn't gonna fuck with Josie as much as sacrificing two other good people. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, any more questions? This is me. Uh, <sighs> no. But so, how do we? How? What's your plan for escape? Like. How do we, how are oh, we... I can get us out of this round. Okay. Well, Long as Azalyn is not fighting me and has no way to get out, I can get us out. Do you think he'd be able to get out with half his power? Your dog drinking. I know. <laughs> I know you're drinking. The way you said that, your dog drinking. Uh, you get pee Yes, I do think he would get, be able to get out. However, when we leave this round, 
That is when the god Kira is supposed to go boom on the round. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> worry about Asla. I can do no more than what I have. I have made the plan. If you have another one, you can feel free to use it. But I know Asla better than anyone else here. Banishment. I was kidding. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm making a little thing on who's going to which big baddie. Um, I have Strahd and Josie under Aslan. Does Josie want to do the Aslan thing? Um, depending how things go, it may... I think you should hold on on teams for after what Josie decides. Because okay. what if Josie decides to sacrifice those two souls for Saren and Arkyan? Because or... I have something set up for that too, which is going to switch everything up. Okay. Because what if, like, what if Josie figures out that y'all have a plan and instead decides to trust y'all? Which she has no idea... Yeah. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Do you have more questions? Nope. We're not talking about it anymore. Oh, oh, um, what, what is, do you think would be the best way to do damage to Aslan? Does he have, like, resistances, or? He's necrotic. So, so Radiant is. So, if you're going for the Lich, then Radiant's probably the best. If you're going for the human form, any damage. Okay. And the apparatus goes to the original form, or the fake, like, fake. The fake for it. They're both technically real. It's just like the one The that, other half. Yeah. yeah. So it most likely might be that the human has the orb. One of them might be. Yeah. Because the human's not his real form because he's known as a lich. Mm. Well, it's more so based off of personality. Mm-hmm. Which one does he favor more? The human side of him which cared about Eric or the lich side of it. I was gonna say, Josie has a good insight on to, <laughs> to which he one. He cared about power, because the lich side of him cared about power to be inhuman, whereas the human side of him cared more about Eric. Eric was all. It's crazy. As a player, I'm just gonna talk as a player, because right now, just as a player, we know that he doesn't really care about Eric much. No. But his memories say otherwise, kind of. But he also just chose power over his memories. But also, despite those memories, in he's the end. still making Yeah, I was going to say, in the end, it's like he's he's a lich. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're just going to have to do the battle and see which he really is. Mm-hmm. Any more questions? Going once. No. Going no. twice. No. Going three times. Oh. No. I was going to say, <laughs> Josie, no. he always say it's soul to the Lord. Josie, you sit in front of Aslan, who's seemingly human before you, as he says, so... What will it be? Everyone dying or Eric and Irina's lives? Jesse's like, ooh, ooh. Can I ask a few more questions since you're here before this big decision? Sure. <laughs> what was that whole war about with you and Strahd before Ravenloft appeared? I've heard Strahd's side, but I would Guess I can and what did Strahd him? say? What did you say as a player? I'm sorry. Strahd said that basically, um, as Mary, uh, it was a who has the bigger dick content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. Um, Jesse says it was all like power based. Was it all? That's what he said. Relatively. What else is there missing to the story? I hate him. I like the feeling is mutual. <laughs> I was gonna say, feelings are mutual. He killed his brother for nothing. For a woman who didn't even love him. Became a being that is weaker than that of a lich. So, not even remotely powerful enough to defeat me, per se. And he is full of himself, stubborn. He doesn't realize when he's already lost. That is why I hate Strahd on the other page. Sure, there's more intricacies in our relations that I could probably dredge up, but I don't think you'll hear for that Josie Overshire. <laughs> Yeah, I want. I want to ask before. I, is there a way to stall him out at all? Nope. 
There's no way to stall him out. Because this big old conversation that you guys just had is happening simultaneously. Okay, okay. They also don't know where you are right now. Okay, I just want to make sure before you I start. You can ask more questions. Because I, I am generally curious as him as a villain. Because yeah, you can ask more I, questions, he'll answer them. Yeah, I was going to say, I personally want to know, and also I think Josie thinks it's smart to know what's going on. Because, you know, Leon wouldn't ask any of these questions. <laughs> Leon is just there. But says, um, Josie is inherently curious because she's like, this is a villain. Like, this is he not... He says, simply, I want to take everything from Strahd. I want to take skin from bone, blood from vein, eye from socket, hair from head, <laughs> so teeth good. from mouth. I want to take it all. Anything he has ever cared about, anything that is dear to him, that means something to him, that is what makes his heart beat. And I want to destroy it and take it from him and let him see exactly what it is to be used. Because that's all he does. Sorry, I'm blanking. That was funny. <laughs> that, was, that, was no, that, was that was good shit. That was good shit. That was good shit. Um, so, you just, he, so as a player, he hates Strahd because of how, basically just how Strahd was back then. It seems, um, there's probably something more there, but from what he's telling you, it seems like, he doesn't like Strahd's personality, for one. Yeah. But. Also it, because how he treated his brother when yes. Aslan lost his brother. Yes. I was gonna say, Aslan Louis. It seems like he hates him because Strahd's decisions thus far have been inherently selfish. Whereas, yes, Aslan's have been as well, but he didn't want his brother to die. He wasn't expecting his brother to run in there and get Because you know torn what? Up. Strahd didn't have any remorse before he met you guys for anything that he mm-hmm. did. Can. Can Josie insight check him to see if he's like feels remorse at all for his for Eric or something? Yeah, yeah, because that seems like a good moment. Actually, for ask him about Eric first. Yeah, and she's like, and you asked for Irina and Eric for, to put into Cerberus, but what? Like, she I guess she doesn't want to bring it up like condescending, but she wants to bring it up like more curious. It's like, but why do you intend to throw Eric into Cerberus? Knowing Cerberus's nature. Because he's failed me. Just as Strahd has. Mm. Can she inside check him? She's, she's like, mm. Mm. And how did he fail you? He didn't understand the intricacies that is life and how one should act and how one should be. You don't get to be kind caring in a world that wants to tear you down. Mm-hmm. She got a 26. He's telling the truth. About his son. Oops. And about everything he has said this far with a 26, you know he's telling the truth. He has no reason to lie. That's true. <laughs> and she asked about his son. Can, do you think she should? She can ask about his brother, too? We can. And I know you named Eric after your brother. I guess <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it. What? Like how to ask about his brother without being like, "Yeah, you're stupid as hell." <laughs> More like, "Why didn't you do that?" More like, "I'm curious on what you think." He named his son after his brother. Yeah. So Is that like an honorary uh, thing? She was gonna ask like, "What do you think of your brother currently now?" I guess. Well, he's dead, and I can't get him back. If I could trade my son's life for my brother's, I would. Well, little did you know. <laughs> she doesn't have that much power. She's like, oh, little did you know. Ask him if he sees kindness as a weakness. I, I could. You see kindness as a I should ask that. It is. It's what killed my brother. That's true. Caring. Love. Brotherly bonds. That's what killed him. Can she tell with, I guess, the overall insight check that he cares about? He cared about his brother. 
care. It seems he wanted to care about his son, but his son disappointed him, and he's he's he was trying to replace his brother with his son, but Which his was brother like, yeah. was never going. His son was never going to be his brother. He definitely he's only got one little bit of human in him, and that's his brother. And didn't Aslan kill his son? Yeah. Yes. And he regretted it, but... And he got over it. At this point, he just thinks that he's a burden. Mm-hmm. And basically not worth his time. I'm curious if he feels that way as a... Human? No, as a, like... <laughs> a, like a way to circumvent grieving. Like, he's like... He's like, oh, I killed my son, I feel regret. Well, actually, he was like this, so I, I don't feel regret. So he deserved it. So it was warranted, it. yeah. Yeah. You can ask. Are there, any qu- are there any consequences to asking this many questions, or is it just kind of like free game? <laughs> I'll let you ask, because you're not going to get another opportunity. Yeah, I was going to say, I really want to do learn about him. This is my last opportunity. Yeah, I'll, I'll let basically Haley speak through Josie. You get to ask, so. Well, now i got to rephrase that a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not well, I'm not going to ask him if that's so, his fucking coping mechanism. For the most part, yeah. he's not going to take offense to the things that you guys say. Yeah. Unless you're like, you're a pig. He's not going to fucking... <laughs> but, <laughs> but, if it's like, take but if it's like genuine curiosity, it's like, sure, fucking... Yeah. He <laughs> may or may not answer it depending on it, but... Yeah. He's but. not going to kill you for it. <laughs> just, he's like, you're a hoe, and he just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> How old was, um... Eric, when he died? Uh, the son. Was like 18? Oh, do so you mean oh, the son? The yeah, son, the son. Um, oh, well, the brother was 16. No, I was going to say the brother was 16. 15. 15. Uh, but Eric was, like, young adult. Okay. So he was much older than when brother Eric died. Because <laughs> Eric, brother, brother Eric died at 15, but then Eric's son, I'm going to say Eric's son, died at... I'm going to say Eric and Eric Jr. Eric and Eric Jr. Eric Jr. died. Not uh, Eric, because Eric. 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 I wouldn't correct you if it wasn't from the book, but. Yeah. Eric. Ooh. So Eric died at like probably 24 ish, like younger, around older, who knows? And then Eric Jr. did. Then Eric died at 15. <laughs> what of Eric's mother? Who was she? A means to an end. Oh. She <laughs> died in childbirth. Person by name. Okay. But that's not why you're a lich. No. I achieved lichdom in my own time and by myself. And that was not why. In my own power. And that's not when Ravenloft was around, was it? Or did you become a lich in Ravenloft? In. In Ravenloft. And Eric was put in. Eric Jr. was put in the loft with you. <laughs> My castle was put here, and therefore he was too. Okay. He haunts my castle, but not anymore. But. The person who gave me the key to Lichdom. I believe you've heard of her. Amani. Does Josie Bro. know? I don't think Josie does know. He's asking. Josie honestly doesn't really know her that all. All she knows is something crazy. Yeah, I don't think we know. No one's really explained who she's she is. He's assuming that you guys know who you met Limbo crew, so. Yeah. He knows he knows the things that you have done. But he doesn't know. But he doesn't know the intricacies of everything. And yeah, she, I don't know if Limbo crew ever told us about Amani when they were hanging they out. They probably mentioned... Us bits and pieces of her name, but we never got a full fucking rundown. rundown. Yeah. But Jesse's gonna she doesn't know really much about her. She's like, I don't know much about her. Do you know Kira? <laughs> oh fuck. Oh Christ. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I get to figure out how much she knows. She's like sort of? She is the third creator. Oh okay. no. How does the she previous that? third creator was Amani. She is the one who wreaked havoc across the second time. <laughs> I just bash my head in the wall! <laughs> I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> she is the 
the one that started Ravenloft by giving Strahd a dark gift, vampirism, making him the first vampire. But she too also gave me the key to Lichdom. In that same regard, every single dark gift or dark lord <laughs> here, they were offered a deal by her and they all took it. And that's why we're here. Do you resent Strahd at all for basically being the cause of you being here? He is not inherently the cause. <laughs> I am my own cause for being here. Oh my god, he's... So is that just us saying that? The player's like, he's thinking. However, <laughs> Strahd von Zarovich has made my life <laughs> living hell ever since I have gotten to Ravenloft. It has been nothing but a thorn in my side. Yeah. You got a pee? We go outside? Let me ask him to his face. Yeah, so you can see. Got a shit? You got a shit? Got it's, a piss and shit. it's interesting to know what Aslan thinks of everything. You got pee? Now you I'm gonna go outside? I'm gonna go bash my head in the wall. You got pee? Shit. You got pee? <laughs> you got go outside? I'm gonna go. You got pee? Yeah, here I am. Just like, hang hey, on. Very. Do you have to pee? He's like. <laughs> he's like. Lay down. <laughs> he goes lay down. I'm gonna take him potty. Okay. Before we even get started with anything else. Yeah, I was gonna say before we hit the big scene. Y'all can think of more questions for Aslan. I was gonna say it's interesting to know him. That was funny as fuck. You were really marrying like you gotta pee, and then me and Emma, I think he's like you gotta pee. You were fucking ass. Yeah. Well, how's he looking at you? What you were saying? Like that? that. Fucking. I can't speak. He's like... <laughs> He's dumbass face. But not doing his pitter-patter of, I need to pee. He's just staring at you. I'll be back. Okay. Come here. You will be stinky dog. You gotta hurry. They can't stay here all night for me and I gotta wake up tomorrow by then. straight in the fucking cage. In the cage. Go. Fucking, 
mean as don't have the dog but he does and she's like can you ask him what his plans for that long? Well he can't he didn't piss and he didn't shit. Bruh. But he drank some more water. <laughs> I was gonna say I locked him in the damn cage. I told him that if he's gonna piss and shit, he can piss and shit. Shit in his there. cage. Um, I guess I do have a few more. Not really much about himself. Just sure. back to the deal, unless Haley has some more personal questions to ask. Because okay. we can just circulate. Um, Jesse's like, so if I don't take the deal, what's going to happen to my friends in Cerberus? <laughs> die. You're going to make them instantly die? <laughs> like, or she let them rot there? That's not up to me. That's up to Cerberus. Cerberus is like, hey, Okay. Well, he does kind of control... Now there's two options. I was thinking about this all week, but it's still so it's, so, it's still so scary. Would Josie trust her family, or would Josie be like, <laughs> yeah, sure? I mean, that's kind of been Sabor's thing is trusting her family. And so. Josie, Josie's part two is trusting her family as well. Here's not, the thing. not always being there to rescue them. Josie. I want to make things interesting. If you want to make things boring, I'll just kill you. <laughs> and then I'll swiftly end the bargain. Ah! <laughs> but feel free to say no. Prove that you're just as boring as you always have been. Sure. <laughs> Ask him what his plan is for Eric once he has a soul. I was gonna say, what are your plans even for Irene and Eric besides that just invest? Absolutely nothing. They're just going to be added to Cerberus. Yeah. I care not for their souls. Frankly, this is a better deal for you because Saren or Sergei's soul is worth ten, at least, with how powerful he is and was. But hey. It's not like Strahd would in the world to save him. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> He's like, it's not like Strahd has begun or begun regretting and feeling remorse for decisions. Fuck! <laughs> I know him so much better than you could even imagine. And you're honestly foolish to believe that he is anything but evil to his core. Well, there's a reason he's not in control of this realm right now. <laughs> what was that, Haley? Really? There's you a say? reason he's not in control of this realm right now. <laughs> <laughs> if we're being technical about it. If we're being technical, is he really? I'm just kidding. Oh my god. It's still so hard to because I'm like... Sabora, your daughter, she's just another idea. Another pretty thing that Strahd wants. That's all. Damn, Sabora's about to come up and throw hands. Yeah, she's like, you said my name? <laughs> and I think somewhere deep down, you fear that. And I think that you think that any day Strahd could wake up, turn into the old Strahd, and act like Sabora is just like Irina. But hey, I suppose maybe you do just trust him all that much. And I guess people do change. Right? His sarcasm. But not Azalyn. His <laughs> sarcasm. But not me. His sarcasm is I'm the so... same old bitch. <laughs> Seven when he wakes up after two thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> um, he I, that sarcasm was real, wasn't it? Sorry, is this? I'm bad at sarcasm. He doesn't think that Strahd will ever change, and that right now it's just a fluke. And so basically, he's kind of. And all it takes is one bad day, and he'll go straight back to the straw he always was. It's almost like I took that from Joker and Batman. Anyway, I was gonna say. All it takes is one bad day. All it takes is one bad day. That was a good show when we watched it. Um, this shit's crazy. I bet Josie can hear like their voices in her head, like of her family members, and they're like, 
Fuck. Oh. Hey, Josie. What would your family do if you died? <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I was going to snap his fingers. What would your family do if you were in the Cerberus? <laughs> He actually gives you a smile, and his face has been pretty stoic. And he says, I think you know the answer just as well as I do. So make your decision wisely. Because perhaps their lives are not the only ones on the line. <laughs> can, we, can we get a cut to the other team walking around for a second? Yeah. Please. Because <laughs> other team. Writing this down. You guys are wandering. You leave Strahd. Strahd's like, um, bon voyage. And you bon voyage. Are, and you're wandering around the castle trying to find out where they are. And as you do, you sense an immense amount of energy. Um, oh. Specifically, dark and evil energy. Um, and undead necrotic as you walk. And you can assume that is where the Aslan is. The Aslan. The man himself. Why do I feel cold? Um, damn, that's crazy. Do anyone else feel that? Um, all NPCs go, yeah. <laughs> two, two NPCs with us currently. <laughs> um... Any radiant? Energy? Yeah. None that you can sense. It's all being matched by the overwhelming um, necrotic. Yeah. Where are we currently? Corridor. Okay. Um, where you first were. <laughs> so I'm writing out like a columns, columns to see if Jesse would take take it or don't take it. And the more bullet points there is on one of them. I gave you a whole week. It was hard, still. <laughs> she does have a job now, also. <laughs> she, what did she do all night? Th think I don't know. Think of the, the, the Uh-huh. <laughs> I know her. And I also think about flight raising, and I also think about Divinity Original Sin 2, and I also think- You should've been thinking about the D&D more. I should've. Sorry, Jack, I tried. It's she okay. had a Saturday and Sunday after it's last okay. Friday. It's okay. It's okay. I appreciate I appreciate. I ended efforts. the session early, too, for her to be able to think about it all week. I think I want to do that for, to do their scene a bit. That was <laughs> it. That was it. Otherwise, they're going to get to you, and they can't get to you yet, because you need to make your decision. That's where it says. It she's, says not, she's not taking everyone it. Everyone dying or Eric and Irina's lives, her decision, and then she must make it now. Okay. That's what it says in the words. Okay. Well, she's not taking it. <laughs> Are you sure? Mary, please don't say it like that. <laughs> please don't say it like that. I, it's, I'm making sure because you can't go back on this decision. Okay. I'm curious as to why he said that everyone will. Everyone, like, like her. Her specifically. Is that, I don't know if that's like implying. Is she, he gonna, he gonna throw her into Cerberus too? Along she, with. Wanna make an I was gonna say, can I actually insight check that? This is so bright. 16. That's what he was implying. <laughs> with Irina and... No, Mr. he can't get them. He can't get them unless Ruzello is there. Wait, unless Ruzello is there. Do I can... Okay, I need to you ask. You can ask him. I was gonna ask. You won't be able to get their souls unless Ruzello is here. It's bold of you to assume. Can I insight check that? Mm-hmm. 16 again? That's bold of you to assume. Oh, I'm just gonna snatch him out of the sight. I have more power than death himself. In my head, as player, Josie's not saying this out loud, but like, why doesn't he just take the soul of the... Because it doesn't hurt you if he just takes the soul. That's true. It's true. He wants to have you make this. So that means Rosello just can't show up and be like, we have another plan. And Josie's like, oh. And that's why he has put this decision on you. And then not Sabora, no one else, because this wouldn't affect anyone else like it would affect Josie. So she, Josie has to make the decision. And it affects. And it, I'm not trying to rush you because I don't want you to rush on this yeah, decision. That's why I said, think. "Are you sure?" Just because you don't want to. Because he already warned you of what would happen if you said no. 
which is Josie being thrown in there and also Now, the you as player know that they have a way to get into Cerberus. But Josie, but Josie doesn't, doesn't know that. So no. that, in her head, would mean automatic death. Mm-hmm. It's like, the, the thing I wrote out on the second column was that this whole fucking thing has been trying to trust her family, that they have a way. And so, I was thinking of that. And so, as much as it, like, she's so scared... She, she has, has to p- not pick not to take because she's like, please have a way. Because <laughs> she... Self-sacrificing Josie! Because <laughs> she's like... Because you know what? Trusting your family thing was a Sabora thing. Not sacrificing yourself thing was a Josie thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> she's doing it again! She's doing it again! Wait! Fuck! <laughs> because Sabora doesn't trust her family. And that's why Sabora gets into the mess as she is, and she goes head first and goes, I'm killing everyone! Because she doesn't trust her family to be able to resolve things. <laughs> Josie has the problem of, I'm going to resolve everything, and so she sacrifices herself to solve problems that don't need to be solved. But what about this one? <laughs> it's a decision. Now, I'm not saying either way whether you should or it's, shouldn't. It's possible. But I'm making it clear to you. Okay. There are going to be consequences either way. Either one, like... And both ways have bad outcomes. Give you all the facts. That is that is a fact. You could even insight that to know that that was a fact. Okay? I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna so, say. Either way, you're gonna get some consequences. So it doesn't matter what decision you make, but one way has worse consequences than the other. Because okay, here's player thinking, Haley, to you, yeah. to you, because I just like to speak my ideas, right? Okay. So, Josie's gotta. I, w- I want Josie to have, because, you know, the reason that Josie also feels like she needs to solve everything is because she feels like someone's going to screw up. That's why she's like, I don't trust anyone to not try to make a decision that's going to make us blow up or something. That's why she does those crazy decisions. Because Sabor's always been making decisions that gets everyone fucked up, mm-hmm. including herself. Because, don't and that's worry, why, don't worry, Haley, I got something for her. It's also Uh-oh. like it's also like a trust thing because that's why it's like I also think it's a trust thing with Josie and her not trusting her family because she feels like everyone's gonna fucking fuck up and make things worse. That's why she has to take the reins. She, she thinks her family is trash. <laughs> she loves them so. <laughs> she loves she her family. Is full we of both fuck think up. our family is trash just she, for different reasons. She loves them so much, but because Sabora thinks shit. that she's better than her family. Mm-hmm. Love Sabora, but Sabora thinks she's better than her family. Josie thinks that her family's just uh-huh. fuck up, so just, like, they really, should not do anything they're just, right. They're just a hot mess, and they keep getting hurt, and Josie's like, stop getting hurt, and they're like, uh, and then no. She's like, and, and then she's like, fuck you, and then she, so she takes the reins and sacrifices herself, because she's like, I'm tired of you getting hurt. And then they hurt themselves more. And then Josie's Which like... Which is exactly, actually, what Aslan warned you of, mm-hmm. just now. Which, power move of him, but... Yeah, he warned that if she doesn't take it, she'd just hurt them more. Is that what he warned her? Is that what that's supposed to He said to? that if you don't take it, what would your family do if you were dead? Yeah. And he basically, <laughs> like, smiled at you because he knows exactly what they did last time you died. <laughs> the major incident of 1911. <laughs> <laughs> it was 1899. Sorry. It's like, oh, I really think, because Josie is, like, probably on the fat fence. Is on the fattest fence in the world. You can ask him questions. I don't, I don't know if I want to stall out that long anymore. Ask him, ask him, what if you don't make a decision? <laughs> <laughs> what if I can't choose? Ask him. <laughs> That's so I set up something for that, too. Really? Okay, I don't want to actually know. And what if I do not choose a decision? Then I do all of it. Oh, okay, oh, that's the I worst. I take the souls and I take yours. Oh, that's, that's the worst option. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's the real bad option. <laughs> but it all comes down to you, Josie, in your decisions. Right? I'm going to throw up. Because, Josie, you love to make decisions, but when it comes down to it, do you really? <laughs> okay, to be fair, if he does take Josie and, uh... As players, we know they'll be able to get into Cerberus and, yes, save Josie. But Josie yeah, doesn't, doesn't know that. And yeah, so, no, it, the, only, the, the only thing that can make the decision is if Now, she... that's also making the assumption that 
Strahd's plan for getting in Cerberus and everything it's goes gonna work. right. Yeah. yeah. Because if it goes wrong... Because this is assuming that Leon can actually touch Cerberus with the apparatus, or touch Aslan with the apparatus. Yeah. Because, like, as a player, it would be easier if everyone was out to be like, ha, 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 ha. ha. Yeah, it's that- basically, it, it's either you or it's Eric and I, Irina. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem that Jesse has is she doesn't, if she sacrifices them, then what is fucking... Do, did Strahd still say if Aslan makes a deal, you should you better take it? Does she still have that? You said you said that last session. Um. Yeah, he did say that to her. Okay. He wanna... said that if Aslan proposes you a deal, it's probably best that you take it. Because he said because if you don't, it may end worse. Now that is a Strahd opinion. And he is very yeah, biased. I was gonna say he has right? a bias. <laughs> so maybe maybe don't to take that for a grain of salt. Yeah, I was gonna say That's not a Mary opinion, and that was not a warning. But that was okay. a straw. That was <laughs> straw. That was pure, pure, that was pure straw. Because you know how straw is. Yeah. And straw is very I wanna save Saren and I wanna save Sephora, period. In point stop. Mm-hmm. So whatever deal he proposes, Strahd's like, take it, because it'll save my brother. But Josie loves both Archon and Saren, so she's like... <laughs> she's literally like, fuck. Oh my god, I hate, I hate it here. I hate it here. <clears throat> my heart for Josie is saying, do what not... What decision would you make, Haley? Um... Help her out. With a third person point. Because I, I feel like... No, yeah. Knowing what I know as player, I would pick Irina and Eric. Mm-hmm. Like, sacrifice them or save them? Or, like, keep them? Uh, give them away. Because if you're, if you're in... They already can't help. They can't do anything for us. But if you are in Cerberus, then that's one less person that's going to be able to help with the Aslan thing. That's true. But she doesn't, but Josie doesn't know that. Just no, know Josie that. doesn't know that. But that's the point that I was thinking about, too, is that, let's say, Josie gets taken by Cerberus as well. That's three That people. is Lucian, Sabora, um, and, and Leon. Ruzello, Ruzello and, Leon. and Leon. That's four people out of... And, he, and I'm telling you right now, he has a plan for every single one of those people. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like because as I'm not think, not thinking trying. I'm trying to think through a player perspective because a player because when they get there, mm-hmm. right when the four of them get there, Aslan will still be whole. That's when Leon has to hit him with the apparatus. Mm-hmm. How is he going to do that is a question. Awesome. But Josie, if she's in Cerberus, cannot help with that. No, she cannot. The hard part is making the decision as Josie and not as Jacqueline. Yeah. And by, by that logic, right, you need to think as Josie. Would Josie think it is okay, or she should, sacrifice two other people to save two people that she loves? But... Also knowing what she knows after what Strahd said, that if it came down to it, oh yes, she would take Saren and Sabora out and, and let Aslan free. It's like Saren.